all the pain and tears and heartbreak I've been going through and yeah all the hardships are transforming me into something bigger and better and beautiful and So, I have this book, Mystical Mushrooms, from the library, Discover the Magic and Folklore of Fantastic Fungi, and I just want to use this book as div divination, excuse me, and just ask God, my ancestors, my spiritual team, are there any messages that I need to hear tonight in this book? Oh, I have this page marked, but we'll read it anyway. Indigo milk cap. Um, it looks like this. Pretty, very pretty. It's edibility, says it's edible. Manifesting in influence, clear communication, patience, tranquility. Other common names, blue milk mushroom, indigo mushroom. <clears throat> this is what it says. This mushroom is an, an attention getter for all the right reasons. Another stunning blue beauty. That reminds us of the magnificence of nature. The indigo milk cap, a member of the, of the genus Lactarius, shares this group's common characteristics of the ability to ooze milk once bruised or broken, some, sometimes called lactating. But the indigo milk cap's milk is special and definitely not something to cry over. It's blue turning dark green when exposed to the air. It's also not as abundant as some others in this group. Okay, I'm gonna pause. I feel like this first part is trying to tell me that yeah, some things in life may hurt and you may bleed and you may bruise, but like the book said, the, milk's, the, the mushroom's milk is nothing to cry about. And so it feels like <clears throat> all the sadness, all the pain and tears and heartbreak I've been going through. And yeah, all the hardships are transforming me into something bigger and better and beautiful. And <sighs> yeah, it definitely, definitely makes me feel seen in that aspect of like, being able to transform kind of like metamorphosis with the butterfly and like turns into from the caterpillar and like blossoms and transforms. I feel like that's just where I'm at right now in life. So yeah, let me drink some water, hold on. I've been like planning to make these journals and recycled paper like all year pretty much. And I'm just now like finding the 
willpower and the energy and having the confidence to actually like just start it you know so yeah it feels good to get back into that oh manifesting with mushrooms this is the page manifesting though seemingly a little mysterious i can't read <laughs> is simply the process of bringing about change and desired outcomes in life through our focus beliefs and actions oh my god i'm literally getting like chills So I just finished this book, they're there. And I'm so upset, I need to talk about it. So first of all, this book ended on very much a cliffhanger. Um, I feel like Tommy Orange did that so we could kind of write our own conclusions. Um, uh, in my mind, I want to imagine a happy ending where Orville is okay and everyone's okay but I don't know the way that and this is a spoiler um pretty much there's a shooting at the end of this book at the powwow and the way that Tommy Orange has written and narrated being shot and also death is just I don't know. It's pretty amazing. The character that I really <laughs> got attached to was Orville because Orville is a teenage character who, um, you know, living with his grandparents, not really uh, in tune with his culture, which I can definitely relate with. And he finds his grandma's regalia, which is like the Native American headdress and the feathers and the bells and the colors and everything. He finds it in her closet and is just drawn to it and he sneaks and dresses up and dances and watches youtube videos um of the dancing and he's just drawn to his culture and so he joins the powwow to dance and at the end of this book it, where it's like you don't know what happens to any of them you don't really know if they're okay or not uh, one character i really got attached to was blue um, probably because I relate with her so much. She was adopted by a white family. Her um, biological mother was Jackie Redfeather, who gave her up for adoption because of the way in which she was conceived, which was just traumatizing. And sadly, the story of so many women, especially minority women, and it's just terrible. So she is adopted by a white family and she learns more about her roots as she's older, as she's an adult. And as she is learning about her roots, she gets into this abusive relationship that she so bravely escapes from. And just the chapter where they're describing her like leaving and like the, the panic <laughs> of being found by her abuser uh, it just touched my heart and it really reminded me of like my experience this her friend Geraldine she so pretty much she's walking to the bus station to leave her abuser and go to a different city and her friend picks her up and she is just explaining to her how dangerous that is and that she should have called her for a ride because it's so dangerous for women of color to be out alone and she specifically sheds light on how many uh, indigenous women and girls are missing and how no one really does anything about that. And I thought that that was very powerful. Safer out here than, than at home, I say. You could do worse than Paul. I should go back then.
Do you know how many Indian women go missing every year? Geraldine says. Do you? I say. No, but I heard a higher number. I heard a high number once, and the real number is probably even higher. I saw something too. Someone posted about women up in Canada. It's not just Canada. It's all over. There's a secret war on women going on in the world. Secret even to us. Secret even though we know it. Geraldine says. She rolls down her window and lights a smoke. I light one too. Every single place we get stuck out on the road, she says. They take us, then leave us out here. Leave us to dim to bone, then get all the way forgotten. She flicks her cigarette out the window. She only likes a cigarette for the first few drags. I always think of the men who do what who do that kind of thing like I know they're out there somewhere and Paul she says which is a blues abuser you know what he's going through he's not who we're talking about you're not wrong but the difference between the men doing it and your average violent drunk is not as big as you think then you've got the sick pigs in high places who pay for our bodies on the black market with Bitcoin. Someone way up at the top who gets off on listening to the recorded screams of women like us being ripped apart. The people who run this shit are real life monsters. The people you never see. What they want is more and more. And when that isn't enough, they want what can't be gotten easily. I meet with a lot of women, she says, trapped by violence. <clears throat> they have kids to think about. They can't just leave with the kids, no money, no relatives. I have to talk to these women about options. I have to talk them into going to shelters. I have to hear about when the men accidentally go too far. So no, I'm not telling you that you should go back. I'm taking you to the bus station, but I'm saying you shouldn't be out here on the side of the highway at night. I'm saying you should have texted me, asked me for a ride. One example of how powerful this writing is in this book. Uh, I can't get over it. Like it's that bittersweet feeling of finishing a book and just like admiring it and going back to your favorite parts. But yeah, They're There by Tommy Orange. Well done. Mm -hmm.